Video conferencing just got a whole lot easier. StreamCam offers you secure, high-definition virtual meeting rooms, all in the cloud. Participants can easily join from any device, including legacy Cisco or Polycom boardroom units. Secure, reliable, convenient. StreamCam. Visit streamcam.ca forward slash demo for your free trial. Hello my, sorry. Hello, my name is Reg Rael. I uh, work as a president for uh, running companies for independent owners and private equity. My name is Nabil Betinjani. I work for CGI, an IT outsourcer based out of Montreal, and I work in business intelligence. Good afternoon, welcome. My name is Stephen Sharp. I'm vice president of PNC Bank Canada a subsidiary of PNC Bank out of Pittsburgh. Hi, my name is Mark Dover. I'm the CEO of Group of Entrepreneurial Businesses here, based here and in Toronto. Hello, my name is Diane Beliveau. I'm a district manager at Export Development Canada. It's the uh, export credit agency of, uh, of Canada, the equivalent of the KFW in Germany. J'aimerais souhaiter bonne chance à l'équipe. You may now begin your presentation. Thank you. Day. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to you, respected members of the board of Elfram. We're very happy to be here today to help you advise you on some strategic redefinements that are necessary right now for your very successful uh, company that is now in a challenging environment. So what are we here for today? As you know, Peter Stone, the managing director of the South African division, has had some recent challenges in this market, even though the company is very successful there. But um, there are challenging market conditions, um, there are capacity problems, so this has led to the fact that a bit of uh, a huge contract of 90 million of a very, very important custom, potential customer, the TSG in Spain, has um, not been successfully won over. So this is really something that uh, needs to be um, tackled in the future, so this is not going to happen again. And as he is going to propose some redefinements of a strategic um, out uh, positioning there, we are very happy to be here today to advise you on these proposals he might suggest for you and, uh, and provide you with a very, um, a very effective approach to uh, cement your standing, to really position your company successfully for the future. So, talking about what are we here for today, 
uh, how to address the challenging market environment in order to cement the excellent market position of Elfham. That is really what we answer, want to answer for you today. So, um, before going deeper into the presentation, let me just take the time to shortly introduce my team. This is my colleague Sarah, over here you see my colleagues Peter and Timon, and I will now uh, let you see a little bit what we have prepared for you today. So I will spend some time talking about the recommendation and the analysis of the driving industry forces to really understand what's going out r on right now, uh, leading on to the key issues that we identified for you. We will then move on to the strategy, which includes mainly three things, talent capacity issue, tackling, then uh, moving on to a more favorable market recognition, and a market expansion strategy. In the end, we'll also have an implementation plan for you, of course, and a time plan on how this is going to turn out and be unfolded. So, let me start straight away with what we recommend to you. What are the proposals for us? Securing the talent supply is a major, major aspect. So we want you to do that by partnering with competitors in the short term. We also want you to create more value for the customer by implementing long-term contracts on a competitive pricing basis. And thirdly, we really want you to secure also the long-term competitiveness of your company, uh, which is done by investing in innovation and internal education efforts. So let me move on into the uh, analysis of uh, the current situation and also of a market structure, because it's really crucial to understand what's, what are the key players in this market. As you can see on the left-hand side of the slide, uh, the, the um, construction for a power plant is uh, must be approved by the government and is then passed on to a project owner, which is actually the intermediate between um, the building to the EPC firms. So the EPC firms are our customers. They are the firms that manage contractors, vendors, suppliers, and the, um, and the whole relationship during the construction phase. So our firm is a supplier to the EPC firm and is, um, is a cooperating partner here. The trends in this market, in the market of the heating um, systems for these power plants of solar power, um, are currently of a market size of 2.5 billion, and there is a huge trend of growth. So um, at the moment, we have a CAGR of 20%, and it's expected to be at 20 to 27% in the future every year. So there is a lot of potential for growth here. Uh, also, the renewable sec uh, energy sector is booming, so also governments are placing more importance on that. The trend is globally visible that this is a growing sector. And the largest markets currently are still Spain and US, but also in other countries there are more efforts to increase the, um, the share of renewable energies. Moving on to the driving forces of your business in this industry. Um, we have the overview here with Alpha in the middle, and what are forces that uh, in influence your business? This is on the one hand, of course, your competition. On the other hand, new entrants and uh, competitors that might threat, pose threats in the future as new competitors arise, and the customers. So let's have a quick look at, um, at these three players there. So starting off with the EPC market, so your customers, the companies you are supplying with your, your services. Uh, we have five main players here, so the market is highly concentrated. There's a little number of really influential EPC companies that you can see listed up here on the left-hand side. They vary in size, as you can see in the, in the, mid, um, uh, in the middle of the table, so, excuse me. And they also vary, of course, in the geographic focus. Uh, there you can see that the key decision factors for these, um, for these companies to really give a bit to you as a supplier is um, of course related to costs, because this is really a crucial factor for their business model, being efficient, and then also of course with supplier capacity. So they vary a lot in the capacities, and we need to make sure that you as a supplier can really handle the capacities they are looking at. Also, the quality of the um, equipment you provide is of course crucial, and they're, uh, they're with, it, of course, the te technological support, so technology is an issue. And we have this uh, development that this whole segment, this whole market, is really uh, relationship driven. It's a niche market, there are only a few key players, so relationships and personal, um, personal relationships with these companies really um, have a lot of impact here. Um, so, to take away from here, efficiency and effectiveness, but also the relationships to these companies are very crucial for success. 
going on to um, the current competitive situation and probably arising new competitors, new threats to your industry, to your positioning. There are at the moment no direct substitutes in terms of the heat tracing cables, but there might be a potential threat coming up as this global trend of um, really investing into more renewable source, into new models of um, renewable power plants um, is getting bigger and bigger. So there might be um, disruptive business models coming up, new technologies coming up, posing a threat to your current um, current product, your current position. And we're actually 19 countries right now investing in CSP plans, so there is a lot of movement in this market. Um, this is also why high market barriers uh, could reduce the, the potential number of competitors in the future, so it's important to create market barriers here. So let's talk about the last and the, the uh, current competition, the last point in, in the driving forces that we, we considered here. So Alfram is currently the third largest um, market player in the CSP heat tracing industry. And you can see in this table that there are three main competitors. So here again, we have a really high market concentration. There are uh, very little players that really have a market uh, divided between them. And um, you can see that looking at the services they offered on the right hand side, you were the only one really offering an integrating approach from not only designing and manufacturing um, services, but also installing these heat services and monitoring them. This is the, you're the only one who does it. The other three um, competitors really just uh, focus on the engineering and the manufacturing services and don't do installation. So that's a differentiating aspect here for you. Um, moving on to what can we take away from this? We have had a look now at your competitors, at potential threats in the future, at what the customer needs and what are their decision, tech, decision criteria to choose you in a bit. So what are the key success factors that you need to concentrate on in the future? We identified that the key success factors are actually, what you can see on the left hand side, so the talent of um, your company, the pool of talent that you have, so really highly skilled workforce, really good engineers, um, this is a very important factor and currently you can see that you have eight engineers here and you want to aim at 11 plans, um, 11 plan projects until 2016, taking into account that you need three engineers per plant and you won't be able to do all of these plan transactions successfully so there is a time overlap, you will have a lack of at the maximum 25 engineers in the short term. So we really need to tackle that. This is a, a huge capacity issue for your future success in the short run, but also in the long run. Going on, um, competitive pricing and good quality and technological innovation, of course, is another issue. We're talking about renewable energy here, and this is a market that changes where a lot of innovation is done. A lot of R&D needs to be done to, to exploit all the potential here and financial resources. You're in a very good position right now that you have a significant financing power due to a multi-billion uh, multi dollar uh, euro sorry, investment fund. So you are in a really good position to jump on these trends and to capitalize on them by investing into the right things at the right time and start to redefine your strategy. Last but not least, there is another issue that poses a challenge to your company right now. So there is the trust issue from the EPCs. As I have pointed out, the, the business is very relationship driven. So it is crucial that the EPCs trust you and they want you as a potential cooperation partner for their uh, setting up of, of the power plants. So the recognition is, is very important and we have seen in the past that uh, Alfram South Africa suffers from the recognition as a virtual mon monopoly. So they are actually very con very con uh, very worried about the prices that you may pose with your market power getting higher and higher. So this is another issue we need to tackle. So summing it all up, the challenges are actually a lack of engineers, a lack of human capital now, um, and also the related training time of that because there's a really lengthy education time that takes about two to three years. So this is a big issue. And secondly, gaining the trust of your customers. So I'd like to hand over now to my colleague Sarah, who's going to point out the key issues for you. <clears throat> Thank you, Anya. 
Okay, so far you heard a lot about the internal and external environment of your company and now it's time to ask the question, what are the key challenges that we have to tackle? And we got them over there. The three pillars are we have to tackle the lack of, um, of staff as seen in the analysis. We have to address the supplier power issue because we have a lot of um, issues regarding the relationship to the industry and we have to meet the threat of new entrants. So let's get started with uh, strategic alternatives for the issue of um, talent capacities. First of all, option one would be we could buy up talents from competitors. You've done that already in the past, but you have to think about whether this is a good idea or not. The second point is the internal education and the recruitment of new staff. Third option would be to share talent, with, and talent capacities with some of your competitors. And last but not least, we could reduce the number of engineers used for one um, production, uh, for one plant, um, namely um, raising efficiency. And in order to evaluate that, you can see those um, model here. We had some criteria on the left-hand side. Um, speed of implementation would be one. The impact on um, industry relationships, saying how are um, the um, EDC is being affected by that. Is there an issue of um, getting new contracts and stuff like that? And um, another criteria would be the potential of uh, for generating um, new talents. Is there really a potential there for this strategic alternative? Last but not least, um, there's the feasibility. And we evaluated all of those strategic alternatives you've seen before and um, coming to the conclusion that um, we could, for the short term, share talent capacities with competitors because the main argument for that is um, that we um, have a better impact um, on the industry. We, uh, uh, we can build up relationships with, with, um, with um, the um, EPCs. Uh, and uh, competitors. And for the long term, we are thinking about internal education for generating new talents, recruitment, and all that. Um, reducing the number of engineers is not that feasible because um, efficiency would be a good point, but we think that uh, we already have a high efficiency there, and it's not really feasible to implement that. And uh, buy up talent from competitors would be fast, but you know that this is not really um, um, being um, attractive, attractive um, for industry relationships. This is very important to keep in mind because the analysis has shown that the relationship in this industry is very important. Moving on to strategic alternatives for the supplier power issue. We have three options here. First of them is the increase in investments in research and development to, um, yeah, to improve our quality and to have a strong argument um, for EDCs um, to make contracts with us. The second one would be uh, follow an aggressive growth strategy, um, saying that we are going to invest a lot of uh, um, a lot of money in um, production facilities, in further expansion and so on, so that um, the EPCs would not be able to circumvent us. Um, last but not least, uh, another option would be to aspire long-term cont contacts with EPCs, um, saying that we would like um, build a, um, a contract with those, having strong relationships, and uh, saying that the price is going to be stable, but we are going to um, be showing you how this would be um, look like. And we've done that um, for those strategic alternatives. Um, also, we have some criteria saying the profitability, the impact on the industry relationships, with, which is a very important aspect, the reduction of trust issues, and the feasibility. And putting it all together, we come to the conclusion that we should aspire long-term contracts with EPCs. What, how this is going to be look like is going to be explained by my colleague Peter later on. Um, increased investments in R&D would um, lower the profitability, which is a strong argument against this, and um, 
the, um, the reduction of trust would be also an issue because our um, EDCs would think that um, further investments would, um, would lead to a monopoly um, position of us. The same um, counts for an aggressive growth strategy. Last but not least, we think about um, increased barriers for new entrants in order to tackle the issue of um, possible new entrants. We have three options there. We could decrease prices in order to um, make our industry um, not as attractive as it is now. We could set up startup incubators um, to um, like capitalize on new entrants or we could increase R&D expenditures in order to um, raise the upfront investments for new entrants. Same here, <laughs> we have the criteria as profitability, speed of implementation, effectiveness and feasibility and putting it all together we think that we should um, set up startup, startup incubators in order to really capitalize on those. Um, decreased prices would lower our profitability because so this is a strong argument against it and uh, the same counts for increase in R&D expenditures. So my colleague Peter is now going to explain you how we are going to implement that. Well, thank you Sarah. So this has been a lot of strategy for you and you're probably asking the question how to convert it into concrete measures. Well, we said we want to partner with our competitors to exchange capabilities and to exchange um, human resources. And therefore, we said apply for a shared bidding approach for contracts. Um, and success factors for that would be a relationship of, cl of trust, clear um, service level agreements, of course. Um, and um, we have to address um, other legal issues. Um, Moreover, we found out some possible partners for that which we would be Ecotrace, Pentair, and Termon. And we found that Termon is the most suitable partner for um, shared bidding approach. Um, Termon would um, be helpful in um, delivering the energy engineering and manufacturing um, capabilities, and we in turn would deliver installation at plants. Well, how could that look like? Well, we have to conduct a market due diligence in order to single out suitable projects, uh, and then we have to set up the SLAs with our partner and get a lawyer in so that we are um, legally secured. Well, moreover, we said we want to um, attract new talent, new engineers to your company uh, and educate those um, engineers. Well, we came up with some um, measures for you and I want to go um, into some detail for, for those measures. Well, starting with mentoring programs and internship programs, um, we said one crucial limitation factor for um, engineering capacity is the long lead times for education. And in order to reduce that lead time, we said, well, you could start internship programs um, bonding the best interns uh, at your company. This would lead to um, training before um, they sign up for your company um, and also mentoring programs which would help um, um, the effectiveness um, of, our, um, of our apprenticeships um, and people would be, um, uh, would be trained on the job faster and better. Um, well, we would have to pick um, experienced engineers for them, advise them on leadership skills, how to train staff, uh, and set up a talent database. Um, going on to cooperation with universities and employer branding, well, we said, why do not go into universities, uh, give them some budget for research, and use the results of that research for your own company. Moreover, you could attend um, hearing classes um, to present your company to those um, young engineers, uh, and you could um, offer inclusive internships programs. Well, and we also advised you to um, design long-term contracts with your EPC partners in order to give them a guarantee um, uh, that um, prices will be stable. Well, we laid out a some sort of SLA booklet which could look like um, presented up there, uh, a contract duration of three to five years, um, protection of internal knowledge which is exchanged, and of course, um, stable prices, which would be adjusted for inflation or commodity prices. Um, well, what would we get from that? Trust and contracts, of course, from the EPC partners, which is the most important issue for us, uh, and they would get stable prices from our side. 
So my colleague Timon is going to show you how to set up the startup incubator. So thank you, Peter, for presenting the first steps of our implementation plan. Now, you know you have a unique product in the market, but still we've shown in our analysis that you have a lack of innovation. And we want to fill that gap by proposing you to set up a startup incubator in the Silicon Valley. Why? Because the US market is a main market for renewable energies, and second, the Silicon Valley is the main hub for startups. And therefore, a perfect um, point to set up an office there to, um, to um, acquire and recruit innovative startups, mainly coming from the renewable energy sector, but also um, from high technology and digital solution. Um, the second step would be in this four steps approach to um, set up an, an office and location to provide those startups with excellent working conditions. And the third point is to manage the cooperation with the startups. We are not only providing them with financial resources, but also with a great network and um, opportunities to grow fast. And in the end, we hope in the exchange of, uh, for chairs, um, we want the expected outcomes. First of all, new products and applications for our company, which is really crucial, and also exclusive commitments to work with us. So we have uh, showed you a lot of implementation steps. And this is the time frame for the next years for you. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see at the bottom line the total cost of your implementation plan. And it's around 5 million. But let me remind you, you have this financial leeway because you have a really strong investor in the background. So we think this is really feasible for um, realizing these steps um, for the next five years. Let me just quickly show you the most important steps. Well, first of all, you have to cooperate with the universities and to, um, to really um, open the awareness for the student that your company is an attractive employer. Second thing is to set up the startup um, incubator in the Silicon Valley and, of course, um, you have to go into negotiations with Termon as a um, potential partnering. So, although we've showed you a lot of positive and um, promising effects for the investment strategy, we still see some risks and contingencies for you. So, first of all, a change in governmental restriction in terms, for example, of subsidies, or other de uh, change developments. So we um, propose to really strong monitoring the marketing and the uh, governmental steps and activities. Second is the cooperation with competitors might fail. So you should expand the recruitment uh, on a global basis. And the third um, um, risk is the emerging competitors with disruptive business models, which might be in danger in the future. So let me wrap it up for you. So we showed you with our um, strategy plan how to tackle the lack of talent. Secondly, how to address the um, supplier power issue. And the last thing, how to meet the threat of new entrants. So thank you very much for your attention. And now we're very pleased to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Can you explain to me a little bit more about the, um, the incentive in terms of the long-term contracts for, with, the, with the, uh, the group that you decided to, to use? Oh, yes, of course. Um, well, the idea is that if we have a perceived monopoly in the market, um, the EPC companies are afraid that we will have the power to raise prices. Um, and in order to um, ensure them that we will keep prices stable, but at least uh, stable uh, in terms of adjusted to in inflation and commodity, rising commodity prices, um, they will have a, um, 
a safety measure um, that we will be a supplier with stable prices, not exploiting our monopoly um, situation in the market. You talked about working with the EPCs. How about moving one level higher and lobbying with the government? What are your thoughts on that? Well, we believe that you are in the current business uh, where you are um, offering the, the production, the manufacturing and the installing. This is a really unique integrated approach. So there is still a lot of potential there to grow and to uh, capitalize on that. So we really believe this is uh, your core competency. This is what you're good at. So you should really um, uh, tackle the, the two issues that we point out to you and you're going to grow a lot. There's such a huge potential in this market that um, another step of further integrating this, uh, the next level is not, not necessary to grow and to achieve your, your, um, your aspirations right now. And if I may add to that, um, we have a high technology business with highly specialized um, employees, engineers there. And if we would um, you know, uh, follow your proposal, uh, we have, would have to again um, invest in R&D and we would have to invest in workforce that is capable to you know, take those next steps. I'd like to know a little bit more about your incubator. Um, as you know, Elstherm, we basically are one component when we talk about these projects. Uh, we're noted already for being the most superior product in the market. What is this incubator going to do for us in the short and long term? So, um, as we've shown, the um, threat of innovative, dis disruptive business model um, is very likely to emerge in the future. And this is, um, of course, one important factor that uh, could um, emerge due to startups rising up from um, high financed um, businesses. So we want to go and um, tackle this issue and challenge um, by proactively go into the Silicon Valley to screen the startup there, to um, attend, for example, to pitch parties and to cooperate with them, not only um, for, um, for renewable energies, but also in terms of uh, technical um, advices. It doesn't appear that the EPCs appreciate our total integration of services and product. Have you given consideration to changing or retooling that offer? Well, this is also one measure uh, related to the incubator. So we really want to work on further potential to, um, to adapt our products to, to the needs, to, attract, uh, to adapt uh, the services, to um, offer highly motiv uh, automated processes for the monitoring, which is really crucial in, this, um, in the whole chain of the power plant. Because if uh, the temperatures fall, um, there is a very high risk of, uh, of a lot of damage that's going to be really costly for these power plants. Um, so this is a crucial element and a, and a critical factor that needs to be really maintained well and, uh, and cared for. So um, with the integrated approach, we can reassure that these uh, risks won't, uh, won't turn out to realize, actually. Thank you for the presentation. Um, we are at the point where the company just uh, lost a significant bid. Uh, Peter is in South Africa and Johannesburg and lost his bid. Now you presented uh, many options. What do you do with Peter in all of these options? What, what is Peter's role? Well, Peter is just, or Peter um, and Ethram South Africa is just one part um, of our company. So we uh, think that this whole approach um, counts for also for Peter, but all of our other um, divisions worldwide. So um, having this in mind, um, we think when he implements this plan um, in a good way, that he's going to win a lot of bids in the future. And if I may add to that, as you know, you have a meeting coming up with Peter, I'm asking him to propose a strategic initiative, and you can use our plan to check this uh, if his plan is se sensible and, and if it's um, derived by logical means. So you can use that approach um, to check on Peter's proposal. In the uh, criteria that you mentioned with the EPC market, you said there were five uh, or six decision factors. One of the ones that you mentioned was quality. 
Although in the case there's really no mention to it, could you, you elaborate how you came to the conclusion that quality was important and how, does, how will that impact what you've proposed? Uh, well, quality is important because also on the supplier side, the market is highly concentrated, so competition is quite tough. And we are really um, uh, competing with leading other companies that have also been innovative, that have also good quality. So our def it's really important to be on the top level there and to be competitive in this aspect as well, but also have differentiating a um, aspects on the other hand, like for example, having the integrated approach and offering new means of, of optimization of our processes. So. This is, uh, this is the rationale behind that. When you were presenting, you used the word perceived monopoly. Excuse me? You used the word perceived monopoly. Yes. Could you expand a little bit on that and what, what could be done about that? Well, um, at the moment, it seems to our um, bidders that the market power the company has is, is really huge and is growing fast um, because the, the development of the company has been really successful. It's been winning a lot of bids. So if the market power um, gains further strength, they feel the costs are going to rise and, the, and will be um, such a major player that, um, yeah, we can influence the contracts, we can influence their prices, which is a crucial factor for their business model and their profitability. So um, this perceiving um, the company of a monopoly is, is um, a critical factor we need to, to concentrate on. To, and the, the long-term relationship is supposed to um, regain the trust, is supposed to show them that um, not only our services are highly, uh, high in quality, we are a leading um, supplier of, a, of the process they need, of the equipment they need, but also that we are a, a, a responsible business partner um, and uh, having a competitive price, though. So. You mentioned that you would like us to seek joint contracts with Thurman. Um, I guess a little bit of a two-parter. First of all, Thurman is in a pretty good position because right now other companies are being chosen because they don't want us to be a monopoly. So why would Thurman want to join in and possibly get mixed up in that? And at the same time, you know, what? Uh, why would... Why would they want to do that? Why would they want to, and what would happen if they didn't? What's your plan if they don't? Well, the most um, valuable incentive for them to cooperate with them is that they have the same issues as, we, as your company has. Um, having the lack of um, talented employees is a major issue in this industry. So the main um, incentive for them to work together with us is um, to um, have those um, exchange in talents and um, yeah, tackle the issue of lack of, um, of talents in this industry. Thank you. I think it's great that you uh, mentioned disruptive technologies, but I didn't really hear the link to the incubators and is that one of the driving forces? Well, speaking about disruptive technologies, we often have startups bringing those technologies into the market. Um, and we thought that if we um, co proactively cooperate with those startups uh, and give them, um, give them our advice um, on how to bring their products in the market, maybe even uh, acquire a small startup if, if it makes sense for us, um, we feel that we can um, compete with that uh, factor or the threat of new entrants uh, really effectively. You suggest uh, long-term contracts with, um, with EPC companies. I would like to know there are five EPC companies uh, in this business, and I'd like to know if uh, you suggest that we uh, target them equally or if there's uh, some that are more strategic than, uh, than others for us where we could prioritize our efforts. So <clears throat> as the EPCs uh, differ, um, of course, from the geographic regions, we should first concentrate on the regions where we are already located in. And second thing is the capacities. Um, so as you've seen in the analysis, we uh, separate them um, from the um, highest capacity down to the lowest one. And this, of course, uh, also is very crucial for our um, criteria to select them. So first of all, the geographic regions, and second thing, the capacities. Yeah. 
Um, on the um, in mentorship and internship, what, what do you feel would be the, the changes internally that the company would need to adopt in order to be able to, to carry this out from a cultural perspective, from an operational perspective? Well, we talking about um, engineers here um, who are specialized in their area, but probably have a lack of leadership skill. So we would have to advise them on how to um, build up um, the skill set of young engineers and help them to, to grow uh, learning on the job faster than they do right now. Uh, and secondly, um, to, regarding the internship program, well, we have to be more open for cooperation with as, as proposed universities uh, uh, and um, for, for example startups to really attract those um, those young engineers and position ourselves in the market as an attractive employee. Were there any thoughts about going into different industries with the technologies we have? Well, this is also one thing we want to do um, that was supposed to um, yeah, work together hand in hand with the approach of having these incubators. So it's um, not only um, optimizing the technologies we have, but also looking at edges and uh, industries, at look looking at other applications within the, the industries of renewable energy. As you know, we're now just concentrating on the, um, the solar concentrated solar power plants. So uh, there might be other fields where we can leverage our capabilities and where we can um, um, yeah, position ourselves as well with related services and related products. So this is, of course, another pillar for further growth. You mentioned long-term contracts with the ESPs. Right now, they're obviously not happy that we're almost a monopoly. By signing a long-term contract with us, would that really just acknowledge that we do have the monopoly? Well, because um, those contracts would guarantee what they want, namely price stability. And we could help them and give them the guarantee via those long-term contracts. And if I may add to that as well as this uh, argument, we have the, all of the differentiation factor. So we are the only company offering also the monitoring and the ins in installation services. So um, we really have a unique set of services here and we can leverage on that as well. Um, you could still um, see in the, in the short-term partnerships with other companies to work together in the engineering and the manufacturing or leaving that part to them in the, in, the, in the period where we have shortages in the capacity because they don't offer any installation services. So it really, we have strong arguments for being um, their partner also in installing these, uh, this equipment because we have a quality, we have competitive pricing, we have a lot of expertise, and we are a leading company in this field. So this is really um, a huge argument for that as well. Thank you. We're a very small piece of the, the whole contract, but we also believe there's collusion among the EPCs in distributing the contracts. Do you have another way to get around? what they're doing. I'm sorry, could you rephrase the question, please? Didn't sure. Is there something else that we can do if it's a clear case of collusion? Oh, well, um, obviously, we have to work together with the government and with legislatory um, 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 bodies in order to, um, to prevent um, running into a collusion issue and really get our lawyers into looking at this uh, and having an eye on, on that. How do you ensure that the training you're providing will not uh, be obsolete uh, with the evolution of the industry? The training of new staff? Yes. So uh, we want to work together really, really closely with the universities and ensure they have really specialized, targeted programs for our, um, the type of skills we need because, as you know, it's a highly specialized field of engineering and there are not so many specialized programs of that. So we, we've seen that in other industries as well, uh, that this works really well to establish connections, to establish a dual system of training staff. So this is, um, this is a great opportunity.
Thanks very much. We have a small break. Video conferencing just got a whole lot easier. Streamcam offers you secure, high-definition virtual meeting rooms, all in the cloud. Participants can easily join from any device, including legacy Cisco or Polycom boardroom units. Secure, reliable, convenient. Streamcam. Visit streamcam.ca forward slash demo for your free trial.